Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Hammond High Jazz Band and Director Dan Bolton. Appreciate you being here. Today is Veterans Day, and we are here to honor all of you who have served for our great country. I see a, a sea of different military branches in the audience, and I just want to personally say thank you for your service, thank you for your time, and thank you for giving all of your talents, abilities, and sometimes your very life to our wonderful country. This morning we have with us quite a few electeds, so I'm going to do my best to call them all out and introduce them. Uh, starting with City of San Jacinto, we have Mayor Scott Miller, <laughs> Council Member Crystal Ruiz, <laughs> Council Member Russ Utz, from the Saboba Tribe of the Osinio Indians, the Tribal Chair, Scott Kozar. <laughs> from Washington, D.C., our Congressman, Ms. Congressman Ruiz. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here, Congressman. <laughs> and from the City of Hemet, we have Mayor Pro Tem Mike Percival, <laughs> Council Member Bonnie Wright, and Council Member Carly Meyer. At this time, I would like to invite Gary Fowler up to do the invocation, and you may remain seated for the invocation. Thank you. It's good that we start this way. Let's slow ourselves down and bow quietly and know that we are in the presence of not, each, not only each other, but God as well. Almighty and ever-loving God, creator of the universe in all of its beauty and complexity, creator of each of us in our beauty and our complexity too, we are glad to pause here today when we could be doing other things instead. We're glad to be here with each other, knowing we represent many, many more who would be here right now but couldn't be, they're here in spirit. We pause to humbly give thanks for those who have served in so many different ways, especially through the armed forces and others as well, who have supported them and cared for them. So many have served, sacrificed, even given their lives, and many are doing it now, these days too. We give great thanks. We pray that we might be blessed in such a way that whatever we are each doing in our individual lives and activities, we will also serve in this community and well beyond. Give us your wisdom. Give us your care. Give us your patience. Move us in all of the right directions. We pray together. Amen. Now, if you would please stand for the presentation of the colors. We will now have the Pledge of Allegiance led by Don Simpson and then the National Anthem sung by Eugene Johnson and Sylvia Torres. 
Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. to Hemet High, uh, Eugene Alt Johnson and Sylvia Torres, and thank you uh, Takwitz High School, uh, JROTC. Their, their kids are just awesome. It's also JROTC. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, yes, thank you. Give them uh, some applause, and you may sit down. At this point, uh, we're going to invite uh, Lakshman Koka and Ed Formica to come up and talk briefly about the flags of freedom. We do not have Ed Formica, we have Dean Wetter and Dave McCullough. McDonough. <laughs> Good morning, veteran heroes and supporters. Welcome to the fifth annual Flags of Freedom Salute to Veterans. Please look around you. Look at those beautiful 1,776 flags of freedom saluting the veterans and speaking out proud and loud. Thank you. Isn't it really breathtaking? Ladies and gentlemen <clears throat> and children, I'm Lakshman Koka on behalf of the City of Hemet, San Jacinto, Saboba, and the Exchange Club of the Valley. We thank you for joining us this incredible, beautiful Saturday morning. We the grateful have once again come together to thank and in honor of those who served, those who fought, and those who gave us the freedom, the gift of freedom with their devotion for our great country. As I always say, it is indeed an honor and a privilege for me to be standing in front of you, admiring our beautiful flags, and to have this opportunity to honor and service our great service members 
and to remember the sacrifices they have made so we can live in freedom in the greatest democracy of the world, United States of America. Yes, it sure is. I would like to ask the service members and veterans who are here to stand for a few seconds if you are able to. If you're in a wheelchair, please do not stand. The rest of you can stand. Let's give a nice round of applause, folks. Thank you for serving this great nation. Please sit down. I would like to close with this. Who is a true hero? A true hero is someone that does not put his mother or father first. No, not his brother or sister first. Not even his son or daughter first. The real hero is a veteran who puts his country, America, first. For that, my dear veteran, you are the true hero, and we applaud you for that. We have our local, state, and national leaders here, so let us care for the ones who are here today, and remember the ones who made the ultimate sacrifice, and say, we still think of you. You're always with us. I would be remiss if I did not thank all the wonderful volunteers who have helped us put these flags up there, and uh, especially the church congregation, and also uh, Valleywide, the Hemet Gatekeepers, um, Hemet High School students, especially the Habitat for Humanity Student Chapter from Hemet High School, led by Maddie and uh, my own son, Krishna Koka. Thank you, thank you, God bless you, and God bless America. I would now like to introduce our keynote speaker for today, Chief Master Sergeant Angela Valentine from Hemet High School's JROTC. Welcome. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, Mayor Krupa, Congressman Ruiz, and distinguished guests. It is an honor to be here today to celebrate with all of you on such an important occasion. Let me start by saying to all of the veterans, thank you for your service. Today is a special day set aside to honor America's veterans for their patriotism, love of country, and willingness to sacrifice for a greater good. Veterans Day is a day not only to remember those who gave their lives in service to our country, but also to acknowledge the sacrifices of the men and women who are currently serving in our armed forces. You know, on Veterans Day, sometimes we lose connection to the real meaning of this day. Some people will recognize Veterans Day with a brief pause or moment of silence and then move on with their lives. I believe it's imperative that we reflect on this day and every day, the contributions and sacrifices that the men and women make every day, men, women, and their families. The contributions and sacrifices of the family allow this country to occupy its position of freedom and responsibility and allow us to gather here today. The brave men and women who serve our great country from, come from many walks of life. They are uh, parents, grandparents, children, their friends, co-workers, and members of their communities. For many people, Veterans Day simply means a chance to enjoy an extra day off work or a day out of school. But for me, a veteran who spent 29 years on active duty, I can tell you that it means so much more than that. According to the history of Veterans Day, since 1938, the 11th of November has been observed as a legal holiday, and it was originally referred to as Armistice Day. Armistice Day was primarily set aside to honor the veterans of World War I, but in 1954, the 83rd U.S. Congress amended the 1938 Act that made Armistice Day a holiday, removing the word armistice and replacing it with veterans. 
this holiday now honors all veterans from all wars. Since World War I, the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard have fought in several battles. Some include World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, Grenada, invasion of Panama, the Persian Gulf, the intervention of Bosnia and Herzegovina, invasion of Afghanistan, and invasion of Iraq. With each day that passes, we move further away from these wars. Life gets in the way of the past and we move quickly through the days, the months, and the years. And as these young men and women return home, we open our arms and our hearts and we welcome them. They didn't all come home alive. They didn't all come home whole. Some are not yet home. And we are still sending young men and women into harm's way. The many sacrifices that our veterans make can never be compared. We owe our veterans all our respect and gratitude. Since 9-11, it has been become common that when we see a person in uniform, we say thank you for your service. Now, I can't speak for the rest of the veterans, but I'll be honest and I'll tell you that in the beginning for me, when people would thank me for my service, I would sometimes wonder if they were being sincere or if it was just another popular phrase. For me, sometimes the thanks came across as a, a reflexive offering from people who, although they certainly meant well, I don't think they truly understood what it is that military members do out there or what motivates them to do what they do. Well, I can tell you, I don't feel that way anymore. One day I was in Lowe's and a teenage boy came up to me and he said, thank you for your service. So I asked him, well, I said, thank you, thank you for your support. And then I asked him, what made you thank me? And he said that his mother told him that any time he sees a person in uniform, he should thank them for their service. So I then asked him, well, did she tell you why you should thank them? And he said his mom told him that military members are the one who protect the security of our country. And she also told him that his father served in Vietnam, and when he returned home, he didn't have anyone thanking him, nor did he feel honored to serve. Many of us may remember the stories of the Vietnam vets and even those in, in Korea who returned home and didn't receive much of a welcome or didn't get told, thank you for your service. So I believe that the boy's mom didn't want military members to feel the way her father felt. So she and her son made it a point to always express their gratitude for our veterans. So from now on, when someone says to me, thank you for your service, I assume it's coming from a great place in their hearts and that they truly understand the many sacrifices that our men and women make every day. I would like to quote a passage from President Ronald Reagan's Veterans Day speech that he gave at the Vietnam Memorial on November 11, 1988. I took the liberty of adding the last few words. For too long a time, they stood in a chill wind as if on a winter night's watch. And in that night, their deeds spoke to us, but we knew them not. And their voices called to us, but we heard them not. Yet in this land that God has blessed, the dawn always at last follows the dark. And now morning has come. The night is over. We see these men and we know them once again and know how much we owe them, how much they have given us and how much we can never fully repay. And not just as individuals, but as a nation, we say we love you and we thank you for your service. President John F. Kennedy once said, a nation reveals itself not only by the people it produces, but also by the people it honors, the people it remembers. 30 million military veterans walk among us and on this day, our nation remembers and thanks them all. In closing, I would like to share with you a short poem written by an unnamed author. It's appropriately titled, A Veterans Day Poem. Today is a day we honor the gallant and the brave, the men and women who dedicated their lives 
and the sacrifices that they made. When America had an urgent need, they were the first to raise their hand. Without thinking twice about it, they were proud to take a stand. Some returned from the war with battle scars, others in flag-draped coffins. Although their flesh may have left, their spirits will never be forgotten. They unselfishly and knowingly put their lives on the line. So when you see a veteran, thank them, because without them, freedom would have died. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for having me here today. Thank you for joining me in honoring our veterans and those who continue to serve. God bless you and Godspeed. Thank you, Chief Master Sergeant. We will now get into our spe special presentations, and the first one I will call up Mayor Pro Tem Mike Percival from the City of Hemet. Thank you, Mayor Krupa. I can say that it is my honor to give out this first presentation as a Navy veteran and a son of two boys who are actively serving and one uh, being deployed to Iraq uh, next month. Uh, this is my honor, so I would like to um, ask Dr. Kern if you could step up here, please, sir. Dr. Kern entered the United States Army in 1953. Dr. Kern served as chief consultant to the Surgeon General and head ophthalmologist in the 24th Evacuation Hospital in Long Bin, Vietnam. Dr. Kern was awarded the Bronze Star Medal during his service and honorably discharged in 1968 as a lieutenant colonel. Sure. On, behalf of the, on behalf of the city of Hemet, I would like to uh, present this proclamation to you in recognition of service to country, family, and community. I, Michael Percival, Mayor Pro Tem of the city of Hemet, on behalf of the city Hemet City Council, hereby honor Dr. William A. Kern. also add for some of you veterans from Vietnam that Dr. Kern was in Vietnam during the Tet Offensive and worked many, many, many long hours without any relief trying to put our boys back together. Thank you, Dr. Kern. Uh, now I'd like to invite Chairman Scott Cozart to present on behalf of Saboba. Good morning. First and foremost, I'd like to thank the Creator for giving us such a beautiful day. It is definitely a good day to honor those that have sacrificed so much for the freedoms that we enjoy. It also gives me a greater honor to present one of our own, our Saboba tribal member, and also a relative of mine. Now, he may not want that exposed, but too late, <laughs> I'm gonna do it. Benny Helms, Junie, as we all know him, graduated from San Jacinto High School in 1966. He received an induction notice and reported and joined the United States Navy. He began the service training for several months in San Diego, California, then on to Beeville, Texas for over eight months and then for the next two years was assigned to the Bonham Richard aircraft carrier, which took Benny to Vietnam seeing two tours of duty. While on board the Bonham Richard, Benny was assigned as an aircraft handler, which meant he was responsible for the safety and security of the aircraft in the Fly 3 area or flight deck. And later he became a plane captain of TF-9J and TAF-9J aircraft. After Vietnam, Benny was sent to Bremington, Washington, where the Bonham Richard was decommissioned. Benny also received several distinguished awards while in the service, including the Vietnam Service Medal, Campaign Medal in Vietnam, and many performance citation awards. 
Benny comes from a long line of military servicemen and women. His father, Benny Sr., was in the Army, his uncle Vince in the Marines, his aunt Jessie was a WAC, and many uncles and cousins also served in the military. His best friend, Joe Pink, signed up at the same time as Benny, and he was killed in action in Vietnam. Benny is currently a member of the American Legion's Post 848 and is also a member of the Viet Veterans of Foreign War and was honorably discharged from the Navy in May of 1973. Ladies and gentlemen, I present Benny Junie Helms. There was a mix up with the proclamation, so we're going to get that to you. Thank you, Scott. We will now go on for the special presentation by the mayor of San Jacinto, Mayor Scott Miller. Folks, it's an amazing day today as we celebrate our veterans. I can guarantee you that there's no place on the face of the earth that celebrates their veterans the way that we do. So it is very encouraging, not only to see all the flags, but to see the fact that we do not forget those who have not only paid everything for us, but served and continue to make America the bright and shining star for the whole world. Today, the city of San Jacinto honors Robert Kohlberg. As a proclamation of the city of San Jacinto, whereas Robert Kohlberg was born at the height of the World War II efforts on December 18, 1943, he's a proud American veteran Robert is a father, a grandfather, and a great-grandfather, and he is a wonderful example of what a patriot is and what a dedicated American is. Robert entered into his military service on October 10, 1963, with the United States Army. He began his military training at Fort Ord here in California and moved on to his advanced military training at Fort Polk in Louisiana. With Robert's natural talents, he quickly qualified as an expert in the M14 rifle and small arms weapons, and due to his leadership abilities, Robert quickly rose to the rank of sergeant and served in a wide range of critical military roles. Robert served as a small arms and heavy weapons specialist with the 24th Infantry Division 3rd Battalion in Munich, Germany, and the 19th Infantry Division. While on security patrols along the Berlin Wall, Robert earned numerous military honors, such as the Campaign Award, a Unit Citation Accommodation, and the Presidential National Defense Medal, among, among multiple other military honors. Robert is a well-decorated American veteran. After his military service and returning to civilian life, Robert continued to find ways to help his fellow veterans. Robert joined the American Legion and served as Post 848's Executive Committee member and Post Adjutant, Adjutant in addition to serving as the Post Commander and First Vice Commander while also serving is a member of the recruiting committee and representing the post regionally. And then once again, Robert expanded his commitment by serving as a rifle team and honor guard captain, providing military honors to veterans at our national cemeteries. Robert Kohlberg is an example of patriotism and service for all generations to come. Now, therefore, let it be proclaimed by the City Council of the City of San Jacinto that Robert Kohlberg is a great American veteran who has served his country with honor and dignity, helping to keep America the greatest nation on earth. Presented this day, November 11th, 2017, signed by the Mayor and City Council of San Jacinto. Folks, let's thank Mr. Kohlberg.
Next, we will hear from our very special guest, Congressman Dr. Raul Ruiz. Good morning, and thank you, Mayor Krupa. You're doing such a fabulous job on behalf of everybody here. Thank you so much for your dedication to the city and to this ceremony as well. Chief Master Sergeant Angela Valentin, this beautiful words. Thank you for your service from the bottom of my heart with full authenticity. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, and also to Dr. William Kern, thank you. Thank you for your service, Robert Kohlberg and Benny Juni Helms. Thank you, uh, all of you. So I know that, that we had our veterans raise their hands, and I'm going to ask that our veterans' spouses and their family members raise your hands now. If you all can raise your hands, if your spouse or a family member, son, daughter, father, aunt, uncle, I want to thank you too. Thank you for your service as well, along with our veterans. Because now as a member of Congress, when I have to leave home every Monday and I, I uh, leave my two daughters for four or five days every week and then I come back on the weekends, it's tough. It's very, very tough to say goodbye. And, uh, and I, you know, all I can think about during the week is, you know, when am I going to get home and see my family again? So I can't imagine, I cannot imagine how you all did it when you had to leave for six months at a time, sometimes a year, and not know if your family member, your loved one was going to come back or whether you knew that, that you were going to ever see them again. So I want to sincerely thank you for your service as well, for being there for them when they came home, to be their therapist, to be their advocate, to be their caseworker, their social worker, their doctor, to be their leader in the house, to keep it all together and help your family. So thank you as well. The men and women who served our nation in uniform exemplify the highest level of service. You served with incredible selflessness, often leaving your families for months at a time like I just mentioned. We owe you a deep debt of gratitude and on this Veterans Day, our American Civic Holy Day, holy because we set it aside to commemorate and to reflect and to make it special amongst all the other days of our year in order to recognize and to appreciate and to reflect and to recommit ourselves to serving our veterans and to honoring all of you and your families. That's why it is the holiest of American civic holy day that we have in order to be here with you and it is such an honor to do that and we stand in awe of the great sacrifice that you have all made to keep us safe and your service in healing lives and saving lives in the battlefield uh, and we are committed to ensuring that you have your services your benefits your medical care your health care and everything that we can do sometimes it's rough and and we go through the rough and tumble and we're trying to unknot a ball of yarns that's full of knotted and we feel like we run into walls but let me tell you that uh, it is nothing near the difficulties that all of you had in staying alive and helping fight for our freedoms and liberties and so we do it with a sincere sense of humility and to honor you right now I want to talk about a veteran that I recently became very close with her name is Jennifer Kepner and she was 39 years old she was an Air Force veteran she served in Iraq for six years she was in our military she recently died of pancreatic cancer. She left behind two children and a husband, and she was very healthy. She was one of those healthy nuts that would run even after boot camp. After a long day of service, her friends would say, she followed good nutrition, she exercised every day, and her doctor looked at everything. She did DNA tests, everything she could to figure out how in the world did a 39-year-old very healthy young woman developed one of the most aggressive cancers that we know. They did DNA tests, everything came back negative. And then Jennifer told her that she was stationed in Balad Air Force Base in Iraq. And she was exposed to what they call burn pits. Burn pits are these uh, 
10 acres pile of trash and they'll burn anything from plastics to computers to uniforms laced with DEET and everything. And you can see this black plume of smoke from miles away, way up high in the sky. And she told me how it would irritate her throat and her nose and she would cough and she would get sick and she would just feel terrible. And now we're realizing that that plume of giant smoke contains carcinogens, chemicals that can create cancer. And those carcinogens are found in the dirt around the base where thousands of men and women in uniform are stationed. And she told me, she told me, Raul, let's make sure this is not the Agent Orange of our generation. So I'm here because she asked me to talk about burn pits. And I'm here because she asked me to make noise about it. And I'm here to ask you to help me, to help all of us come together as a community to make noise and honoring our veterans by making sure that we protect their legacies, that we protect men and women in uniform now from these exposures to these carcinogens. Because when we come together as a community, when we come together as a country, when we come together as men and women who honor our veterans and we remember them in all the fight and all the services, our friends and those that passed away, including some of my uncles, then we are strong and we're always strong. So with that, I want to say thank you for your service. Thank you for being here. Thank you for honoring our men and women in uniform. Our office is here to serve you in whatever capacity that we can. Thank you. We're going to have... Uh some thank yous to people who who helped put this on today. If you've noticed the flags of the 50 states around the perimeter of the uh, of, of the fence, that is Taquitz High School Marine, J-R-O-T-C. The pre presentation of the colors was also Taquitz, J-R-O-T-C. I would like to thank Dan Bolton as director of the Hemet High Jazz Band. Thank you, Dan. Also, thank you to the American Legion and to the VFW for all of your support and help in getting this day done. Our city staff and our city veterans. If you look on the back of your program today, there is a list of city employees, current employees, who are veterans. And I want to doubly thank them, not only for their service to their country, but now to their service, for their service to our city. When we are done here, uh, when I'm done, uh, we are going to have the, the rifle salute by the American Legion Post 53 and the playing of taps by Isabel Tate from Hemet High School. At that time, uh, we will be concluding here. The Hemet High Jazz Band will once again play the, the military songs that they played at the beginning. So I invite you to stay around and listen to that. Uh, also at, uh, I believe, the exact time is going to be 11.06, that we will have uh, the missing man formation fly over. Uh, the missing man um, is, let me explain kind of what it is. Uh, it says, Airmen enjoy and know a special breed of fellowship, and the missing man is a tribute paid in honor that forever symbolizes a fallen aviator's true spirit. As the missing man pulls away from his comrade, he's saying goodbye. as he points his nose towards the heavens. As the formation continues on, his slot is left open in recognition of his memory. 
his wingmen continuing on as if he was still there. And to his soul, they wish him, Godspeed, my friend. So with that, uh, the closing is with the rifle salute, the playing of taps, and then we will have some more music from Hemet High. Thank you all so much for coming. We hope you enjoy your day with us. Please walk around the flags. On some of the fl uh, flags of freedom, you will notice that there are yellow ribbons. You can stop and read those. Those flags have been purchased in honor of different family members uh, in the valley. I actually have three of them out there myself and just realized I have to buy two more. So uh, again, thank you so much. Thank you to our veterans. I hope your day is wonderful. I hope your year is wonderful and that you will see us come join us again next year. Thank you. Yay! Fire! <laughs>